Uh, Ms. Zirkin, thanks very much for speaking to France 24. Yours is one of the aid groups which is demanding access uh, or humanitarian access in Syria. Talk us through what your team are seeing on the ground. Yes, well, we are not exactly an aid group. We monitor uh, human rights violations in the context of conflicts like this. And um, what we have been documenting now for more than five years are the incessant, repeated, deliberate attacks on health facilities and health personnel, along with the other um, terrible war crimes committed uh, in this conflict, most of them by the Syrian government. And what we're hearing from the ground in eastern Ghouta is um, as your reporter indicated, uh, as many as 400,000 people, most of them civilians, no doubt, uh, who have been literally blocked from uh, humanitarian aid for more than four years. And so you have a population that has uh, many people malnourished, many people urgently in need of medical care, uh, people desperately traumatized by incessant, indiscriminate bombing and often targeted bombing, which is aimed at civilian infrastructure and facilities, who now finally, after um, last week's resolution by the Security Council, expected what the, all governments agreed on at the Security Council, including Russia, a 30-day cessation of hostilities. And in fact, as we've seen in the last few days, this has not been respected. And the stripping out of medical supplies by the Syrian government is an absolute outrage. That they have 42 or more trucks ready to finally break the siege and deliver aid to this population in desperate need, and then they, they allow just a few ridiculous narrow uh, corridors of time, a few hours, which is absolutely absurd. I mean, in the that raises a, a, a very in, important question, as you're saying there, where people were waiting for a call for a cessation of hostilities. That hasn't worked. Where, if anywhere, can this go from here? Well, all governments who are um, uh, powerful actors in, in this uh, brutal war need to put the maximum amount of pressure on the Syrian government so that there is a consequence if a resolution like the one that was passed a week ago Friday at the Security Council is violated in such a blatant manner. Uh, and uh, it, it's useful and helpful that uh, organizations like the World Health Organization immediately called out this violation. But there needs to be also maximum pressure on Russia, which is probably the only powerful government that has influence on the regime of Basr, uh, of uh, al-Assad, Basr, Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's just um, a ridiculous situation. And, and people are dying daily, both by these bombardments, but also by the lack of access to medical care and humanitarian aid. I mean, one of the, the reports coming out today it says that, you know, for Syrians living in this besieged enclave, living underground has become part of the norm it, because it's just too dangerous to be anywhere else. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I have to say this is not only about eastern Ghouta. There are many parts of Syria where this, uh, the same phenomenon has been going on for years. And, of course, we saw um, the, uh, in Aleppo, um, not that long ago, just a little over a year and a half, that this, a similar situation uh, occurred. Again, the same violations of uh, the right to uh, humanitarian aid in a conflict, uh, agreements violated routinely, um, and it's truly shocking that the entire world is not able uh, to stop uh, these crimes. Dana Serking of uh, Physicians for Human Rights, thanks for your time on France 24 today.